Welcome to the Ultimate Stasis Hunter Build Guide, where in just a few minutes, you'll walk out with a setup capable of infinitely freezing the whole battlefield with non-stop grenades, stunning all three champions without any champion mods, and most exciting, rocking a 90% damage resistance stat for what is practically invincibility. This build has seen many different iterations from the sprinting energy regen warlord with frosties to the non-stop dodging shuriken thrower with radiant dance machines. But the new stasis hunter build I have for you here today is without a doubt my favorite of the bunch. And it's one of those setups that absolutely anyone can execute to near perfection, resulting in easy clears of any activity in all of Destiny. So whether you're a 10-year veteran or a brand new player, you'll be falling in love with this build all the same. But first we need to hear about a new PvP mode in everyone's favorite mobile game, Raid Shadow Legends, from our friend Professor Death Knight. Professor Death Knight here with a lesson about Live Arena, the new PvP mode where you can fight against other players in real time. <gasps> Sounds terrifying? Well, so is going to the dentist. You should still do it. Live Arena has a draft feature where you can pick and ban champions to fight for you. <laughs> Teamwork! When you win matches, you'll get live arena crests towards unlocking special area bonuses, or so I hear. I'm too afraid to try any of this out. All right, class. Any questions? Yeah. What's it like when you win in live arena, Professor Death Knight? The crowd goes wild. Ah, death Knight, Death Knight. Death Knight. And new players can use promo code JTSKIN to get a free epic champion and skin for the Stag Knight. There is also a brand new legendary champion, Sun Wukong, known as the Monkey King, that players can get just for logging in for 7 days. And by installing Raid with my link in the description or QR code on screen, you can get a starter pack with an epic champion and a ton of goodies. Thanks to Raid for helping me keep the lights on, now let's become invincible. We kick things off with the most quintessential stasis hunter staple, the Duskfield Grenade, a deployable snow globe that will slow and freeze all enemies inside of it. Not only does this grenade shut down any enemies inside of it, but it also, for all intents and purposes, shuts down all enemies behind it as well, since they can't really push past it to get to you as they would get frozen in the process. And it only gets better when we bring our next addition into the mix, the newly buffed Renewal Grasps Hunter Exotic Gloves. Seeing these gloves come back is like looking at the cover of The Return of the King. Which, by the way, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below, because we definitely just became best friends. But anyway, The Return of the King is a perfect antidote for these gloves, because they used to be the top dog for stasis hunter builds until they were nerfed due to their dominance in PvP, which unfortunately destroyed their PvE potency as well. But with that Duskfield cooldown timer nerf reverted, they are back and better than ever. Not only do these gloves increase the size of your Duskfield grenade for even more freezing and territory control, but they also reduce the damage output of any enemy standing in your Duskfield grenade by 50% and increase the damage resistance of any guardian standing in them by 25%. These gloves also do a few more things, but we'll mention those as we get to our aspects and fragments. Our first of those, speaking of which, is going to be Grim Harvest, a three fragment slot aspect that generates stasis shards when defeating any slowed or frozen target, which with this build is basically going to be every single target that you come into contact with. These stasis shards will not only restore melee energy to fuel your withering blades for even more slows in stasis shard generation, but will also provide us armor charge stacks thanks to their synergy with some of our armor mods coming later in the build. For our other aspect slot, we're of course going with Touch of Winter, a two fragment slot aspect that juices up our Duskfield grenade to give it even more increased radius and the added power of spawning a stasis crystal in the center of the dusk field dome. Not only does this stasis crystal offer us a way to get some instant AoE damage on nearby enemies by destroying it, but it will also be the number one method of instantly regenerating our dusk field grenade so we can throw these things just seconds apart from each other. This is of course thanks to our first fragment, the Whisper of Shards, which grants us a 600% increased grenade regeneration rate buff when shattering a stasis crystal, which means we get to to throw a Duskfield grenade, which will spawn a stasis crystal thanks to Touch of Winter, which once destroyed will give us another Duskfield grenade thanks to the Whisper of Shards. 
and rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat. Furthermore, when utilizing the Touch of Winter aspect in conjunction with the Renewal Grasp's exotic gloves, the Stasis Crystal spawned will actually be a large Stasis Crystal rather than a small one, which admittedly doesn't actually do anything of value as it pertains to this build, but never hurts to increase the size of our Stasis Crystal. Am I right, gentlemen? These last 10 seconds have not actually been about stasis crystals. But what is actually about stasis crystals is our second fragment, the Whisper of Chains, which grants us an additional 40% damage resistance buff when near a frozen enemy combatant or a stasis crystal. Which for those keeping track up until this point, with the 50% reduced enemy damage, 25% dusk field damage resistance, and 40% Whisper of Chains damage resistance, currently has us sitting at 77.5% percent damage resistance. But don't worry, we'll get that bad boy up to a staggering 90% after we get through the rest of our fragments, continuing with our third with the Whisper of Durance, which increases the duration of our slow debuff and the duration of all slowing abilities, such as our Dustfield Grenades, and Silence and Squall Supers by two seconds. Up next is the Whisper of Hedrons to grant us a massive bonus stat package whenever we freeze an enemy, including a 60 point stat bonus to mobility, resilience, and recovery, a 30 point stat boost to stability, a 15 stat point boost to aim assist, and a 20 point stat boost to your airborne effectiveness. Routing us out is the Whisper of Refraction, which grants us class ability energy refund whenever killing, slowed, or frozen enemies, which as we have already discussed, is going to be all of them. But let's talk armor mods, kicking things off on the helmet with Dynamo for a chunk of super energy when dodging near enemies, great for firing off extra silence and squalls. After that, we have Hands On for bonus super energy on melee ability final blows, which thanks to all of the bonus class ability energy from Whisper of Refraction to give us more gambler's dodges for withering blade charges and the extra melee energy from Stasis Shard Collection, we'll be killing enemies with our melee ability quite often. Rounding it out on the helmet will be a weapon siphon mod matching the element of your primary ammo weapon for orbs on weapon multi-kills. On the gloves, we'll begin with bolstering detonation to receive class ability energy when dealing damage with a grenade, which with our dusk fields that last on the field for up to 9 seconds thanks to the Whisper of Durance, we'll proc this mod twice for every grenade we throw. We'll also want impact induction here as well for a chunk of grenade energy when dealing melee damage to be able to throw even even more Duskfield grenades. And to really take things up a level, we'll finish the gloves with a grenade kickstart for a refund to our grenade energy just for using it increasing with more armor charge stacks. As such, we'll want to start off the chest with a copy of Charged Up to increase our maximum armor charge stack capacity from three to four. But the main star of the chest is the two resist mods that you'll be slotting in to further lower enemy damage from any element of your choice. On the boots, we'll start things with Elemental Charge to receive stacks of armor charge when scavenging stasis shards, which if you remember from our Grim Harvest aspect, will be spawning from all slowed and frozen enemies. We'll also want stacks on stacks to double all instances of armor charge reception, making our grenade kickstart activations much more potent. For the last slot of the boots, we'll grab a copy of Recuperation for a chunk of HP anytime we scavenge an orb of power. Finally, for the class item, we'll begin with Reaper to generate an orb of power on weapon final blows after class ability cast. And with powerful attraction, that same class ability activation will also scavenge all nearby orbs of power to receive armor charge stacks and a chunk of healing through Recuperation. And if that wasn't enough, Bomber in our final slot will give us a chunk of grenade energy on top of everything else with that very same class ability activation. Pair everything we've discussed so far with stat prioritizations of Discipline for maximum grenade uptime and Resilience for an extra 30% damage resistance buff and you'll be tearing through any piece of content with ease. And just to summarize for those who have been keeping track, with the 50% reduced enemy damage output, 30% resistance from tier 10 resilience, 25% resistance from renewal grasps, 25% resistance from resist chest mods, and 40% resistance from whisper of chains, you'll have nearly 90% damage resistance at all times. If that isn't unkillable, then I don't know what it is.
Copy all of this with ease using the Mobilytics written guide or Destiny Item Manager links down in the description, and you'll be in for a good time for your next Destiny play session. So much so that it might even convince you to subscribe to my channel so you can catch my next build video and become even stronger in Destiny 2. I'll see you in the live stream. Remember to download Raid Shadow Legends with the link below or the QR code on screen. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.